हेलो चिल्ड्रन हाउ आर यू होप यू ऑल आर फाइन इंजॉइंग एंड ऑल्सो डूइंग योर रिविजन सो टुडे वी आर ओवर हेयर टू डू अ क्विक रिविजन ऑफ चैप्टर नाइन दैट इज हेरिडिटी एंड इवोल्यूशन नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट बायो एज आई ऑलवेज से योर बायो रिविजन शुड बी डन विद एन सी आर टी सो हेयर वी हैव टेकन एन एन सी आर टी पी डी एफ एंड विल सी ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म्स एंड द कंसेप्ट इन दिस चैप्टर so this chapter is a chapter of genetics so let us first discuss what is meant by genetics genetics it's a branch of science that deals with heredity and variation there are two important terms heredity and variation let us see one by one heredity it means the transfer of features characters trait from one generation to the next generation yes you can write the same definition if it is asked now coming to the second word used over here that's very next coming to the variation part then what is variation variation are the differences among the individual of a species or populations we call them variation now this part of the book it talks about the a very short description is there about the inherited and acquired traits though that part if you look in the portion that part is deleted but a very small description is over here so it talks when we are talking about let us see this part you can mark it in your textbook when we talk about asexual reproduction so in asexual reproduction what happens to the variations variations will be more or less yeah there will be less variation and how does the variation come from the variation comes from the minor differences during the dna copying in the dna copying there will be some inaccuracies and because of that the variation will come there is no other source of variation in asexual reproduction coming to sexual reproduction yeah the variations will be more because their crossing over is happening so variations will be more a very short description of what are acquired traits and inherited traits though this part comes later in the chapter and there are uh, mostly that part is deleted but sometimes the questions come what are inherited and what are acquired traits so when we talk about the acquired traits as the name suggests it's their acquired right so that takes place in the body cells and these are not inherited or transmitted from one generation to another generation okay so the example here yeah, always they will ask with example so the cutting of tail in dogs or boring of pinna that all is not being transferred from one generation to another generation these are also known as somatic variation why somatic because these takes place in the somatic cells coming to the second type of variation that is gametic variation as the name suggests this will be the changes in the gametes or the reproductive cells so these are inherited from one generation to another generation that's the reason why they can be called as inherited traits also so as i said they will take place in gamete and the reproductive cells and they will be inherited the example will be human uh, height and skin color we'll be talking about the gametic variation in these in this chapter okay so coming back to the hereditary part we have already discussed the definition coming to the inherited traits as i said somatic cell variation will not discuss in detail inherited traits will be discussed so here there are some examples which are given so it is this diagram is a free lobe okay ear lobe can be free or it can be attached and this is a trait which is transferred so now there was a scientist george mendel he is also known as father of genetics so he has done some experiment on pea plant and he has given some laws or rules we can say uh, that in detail you will be learning these all rules in 12th grade bio but over here in short everything is given an introduction is given to everything so the entire his observations or his conclusions can be put in form of three laws the three laws i have written over here first is the law of dominance law of segregation and law of independent assortment these all will discuss after we finish the mendel's experiment part we'll come back to these three laws and you will be helping me to define the three laws okay chalo 
then we'll go down as we go go down first question arises why he chose pea plant so there are many reasons why he chose pea plant the variations were the traits were more in pea plant cell pollinating plant okay and uh, what happens the easy to grow plant now there are seven basic traits which are discussed these are all in the 12th grade textbook in ncrt for uh, 10th grade they are not discussed okay there are many traits which can be studied there are seven traits so what will be discussed for you is one flower color in flower color there were two traits which were observed which can be observed one is the purple color flower okay contrasting traits these are contrasting trait and another is white color purple color flower and white color flower flower position we don't uh, discuss for you mainly seed color yeah it can be yellow or green sheet shape can be round or it can be wrinkled which is discussed in the dye hybrid cross in the chapter pod shape uh, mostly we don't discuss pod color also height of the plant will be discussed in the mono hybrid cross in 10th grade so these are the various various traits which can be studied now coming down what mendel did let's see the diagram which is given over here children this is mono hybrid cross what is this this is mono mono means one hybrid cross what do we mean by mono hybrid cross it is the cross between two pea plants with one pair of contrasting characters going back there were seven total right seven total contrasting traits were there when you are studying only one pair when you are uh, observing or the cross is done between to observe only one trait that will be mono hybrid trait so as it says the p i have already told you round wrinkled short and tall plant white color and purple color or violet color flowers so what he did being specific to this diagram because we have to stick to ncrt in bio okay so what he did he did he has taken the parent plant the parent plant which he uh took the ncrt says only one of the parental trait was seen not some mixture of two okay so what uh, they are trying to say is uh, they have taken pure breeds what do we mean by pure breeds as you can see it's a homozygous condition over here both the genes are similar they are same if it is capital t the another one allele is also capital t or if it is short t it's short t so pure breeds we call them as pure breeds or somewhere you will also find them as homozygous condition or this one is heterozygous condition so over here when i take first of all what we should do this is a parent right this is f1 f1 generation so first we will take parent from parent when i take i i have the parent as capital t capital t and small t small t so first we will form the gametes what all gametes can come for this tall plant it can give only capital t right it can give only capital t whereas a small this the plant which has a shorter height can only give small t because they are pure breeds like these are the gametes now if it, when the gametes will meet that time you will form the f1 generation so f1 generation will be a heterozygous condition because one is capital t and another is small t so heterozygous so when this is f1 generation but it was found that in f1 generation the we know the genes were like this but what appeared from outside all were tall okay all were tall so then what he did second he has done self pollination of the f1 generation okay f1 generation was self pollinated that means the parent will be this time capital t small t with capital t small t and there if i form the gametes gametes can be capital t this plant can give you capital t or small t and this plant can also give you capital t and small t now when you cross them there can be a condition where both capital t are expressed are coming in the plant so that time what was seen the plant was tall the next one i can take this capital t from this parent and the small t from this parent 
OK, heterozygous condition, capital T, small t, but still the plant appeared to be tall. Then this condition, small t from this and capital T from this, still the plant was tall and small t from this, small t from this, only we have found that only 25% of the total number of plants or seeds which you got, the plants which you got were showing the same, uh, we can say same phenotype. What is phenotype then? Again one word has come. Phenotype is what is expressed outside. So only 25% of them were showing same short plant because one of our parent was short. OK, and what happens to the rest 75%? They were showing rest 75% were showing the phenotype same as another parent. So here Mendel was surprised and he said that 75% of them are showing the phenotype of one person that that trait that trait must be the dominant trait. OK. So it is dominant trait in these two is capital T. Tallness is dominant, shortness is recessive trait. Over here, if we talk about what is the phenotypic ratio, means appearance wise ratio. So 75%, 25%, this is percentage. If I can take it in ratio, 3 out 3 is to 1 is the phenotypic ratio. What is the genotypic ratio then? Genotypic ratio means genes ratio. Achha. Genes ratio, this is one which is capital T. Capital T, two of them are capital T, small t, and one is again small t, small t. So genotypic ratio comes one is to two is to one. In this two are the hybrid gene, genes. Okay, this was not there in the beginning in our parent generation. This type of gene was not there. OK, this is a hybrid gene which he found. OK, over here in the chapter, there is a small part. Uh, we'll go through this. What it says both capital T, capital T and capital T, small t are tall plants, while small t, small t is a short plant. In other words, a single copy of T, if just one copy of T has coming, is not enough to make the plant tall, while both copies should have small T to be short. The traits like capital T are called as dominant trait. If one allele is also having that capital T, the plant will be tall, while the traits which behave like small T, they will be expressed only in the homozygous condition, those are known as recessive trait. OK, now going further over here, what it says. As the book says, we have just compiled it over here. Capital T, capital T and capital T, small t, both are tall plants. OK, while small t, small t is a short plant and the same line, a single copy of t is not enough to make the plant tall, while both copies of small t are required to make it short and Again, a revision dominant trait and recessive trait. OK, coming back to this experiment, which is shown in figure 9.4. Again, we have taken a mono hybrid. Which character we are studying now? We are studying flower color. And again, we saw that when a purple color flower is crossed with a white color flower, F1 generation all were purple. And in F2 generation, again, 3 is to 1 ratio came in the phenotype. Let's go further. This, what is this diagram in NCRT? It talks about dihybrid cross. So what is dihybrid cross? A cross between, oh, there is a spelling mistake over here. A cross between two plants having two pair of contrasting characters is known as a dihybrid cross. So what do we do over here? We have taken two characters. We are studying two characters together. This example which is given in the textbook is very, very important children. So what are the two characters which we have uh, taken over here? We have taken seed, a seed which is round and green in color. So see round is the shape and green is the color, two traits, shape and color. And the another one we took as wrinkled and yellow, wrinkled and yellow. Please see in NCRT we are showing the round 
with capital R, okay, and the wrinkled one will be small r. And for green, small y, small y, all for a single trait, the genes are homozygous over here. So green, small y, small y, and capital Y, capital Y for yellow color. Again, I am saying the parent over here for a single trait, they are pure. Can you see? They are pure. It's nothing like capital R and small r. Okay, next. So first of all, what do we do, children? What is our first step? Whenever we do a crossing, first step is we make the gametes first. So let us make the gametes. So what all gametes can be uh, derived from this parent? It he it can give only capital R, okay, for this trait, and it can give only small y for this trait. Correct. Now coming to this parent, it can give you small r for the shape trait, and it can give you capital Y for the color trait. So you have got the gametes now when you cross them. All of them, if you cross all of them, will have, see, whenever we are crossing, we have to keep in mind for, for one trait, you have to take genes from both, okay? So it will be capital R, and this can give only small r for this trait. It can give only small y for this trait and give only capital Y from this side. So what has happened to the uh, F1 generation? F1 generation, now what was expressed out, the phenotype of it, it was round and yellow. Only dominant trait is expressed in the F1 generation. If I go back to the monohybrid cross, let us go back, let us go back. See here, only dominant was expressed. Can you see only dominant trait was expressed in F1, whereas in F2 generation, yeah, you got one. The recessive character was also expressed. Same is over here when for both only dominant trait was expressed. Okay, next again, your task is to form the gametes. So, you know, after F1 generation, what Mendel did? He did a self pollination. So when he did a self pollination, uh, both parent will be same. Now let us form the gamete. So when you form the gamete, what all gametes can be formed? Capital R with capital Y, or it can also give small r with small y, or it can give capital R with small y, or it can give small r with capital Y, right? See here in the gamete, one gene for one trait, but now you have a variety, right? You can give capital R or you can give small r or you can give capital Y or you can give small. Y. So four combinations are possible. In dihybrid cross, it's very easy if you keep them in the cross box, okay? Your teachers must have taught you we keep in the cross box. Over here, I don't have space to make that. Okay, keep all the genes, the gametes which we have written just now, keep the four gametes, one, two, three, and four, write the gametes over here, and another parent is also same, so four gametes, one, two, three, four over here, and just write the combinations. So what are the results? When you do so, you will find first, let us take the phenotypic ratio. When you will see that nine is to three is to three is to one will be observed if you have crossed correctly. So what is nine? What was nine? Nine were yellow and round or we can say round and yellow dominant. Okay, both dominant. So next, next was round with green round with green it it will be three okay round with green this one round with green will be observed three similar to the parent another parent wrinkled with yellow will be observed three okay both the parents which were our original parent they will come in three three okay in a ratio of nine is to three is to three is to one the three and three are our original parent. Nine is a dominant trait, maximum number of time it is being expressed. And then comes the recessive trait. What is that? Wrinkled and green. Both these traits were not there with us as the parent, original parent. Okay. So now what he concluded from this, he concluded that when 
capital r capital r and cap okay so we'll directly go back to the recombinants okay we have got two recombinants over here and the ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 now what he concluded from that he concluded that occurrence of the new phenotypes you have got two new phenotypes shows that the genes of round and yellow seeds are inherited independently then they are not joined together it's not like if it is round it has to be green no no it if it was round it can be yellow also theek okay? hai new new recombinations you are getting it is not like that if it is always wrinkled it will be yellow no no wrinkled can be green also so what he concluded from this is that independently they are being expressed independently they are being inherited okay very important conclusion now coming to this part of the chapter what does it says how do the traits get expressed how do the tra traits gets expressed so how does the hereditary mechanism work this is also very important the cellular dna is the information source of making protein okay first we'll come to the dna dna is the source of information for making protein in the cell and a section of dna that provides the information for one protein is called the gene for that protein okay now how does the pro protein will control the expression of that specific trait let us see that how do the proteins control so for that they have taken an example of a growth hormone in plant which is responsible for the height of the plant so the height of the plant can thus depend upon the amount of that particular hormone the amount of the plant hormone will depend upon the efficiency of making it now it will of course efficiency means some enzyme will be responsible for that that enzyme's efficiency if that enzyme is working nicely lots of that tallness hormone will be produced right and if lots of that tallness hormone is produced the plant will be tall so if the gene for that enzyme has an alternation that makes enzyme less effective then that hormone will be produced less and then the plant will be short so that we have put over here uh, like a flow chart first is the cellular dna that is a source of information now that will decide for the synthesis of the protein proteins are enzymes so enzyme if it is working efficiently more hormone if more hormone of that tallness hormone is produced the plant will be tall okay um then there is something over here that also we have to give a look Mm. yeah uh, they are talking about the factors see we have put it over here the factors that are responsible for the sex determination of an organism there are two first is the environmental factor okay environmental factors what happens in some animals from the environmental factors it will be decided that what could be the sex of the child so what are the environmental factors like temperature at which the fertilization takes place will decide the gender it happens yeah it happens so what is the example example is a turtle there are many other examples also the example which we can give if it is asked is turtle okay that will decide what will be the gender of the offspring if the temperature is more if the temperature is less the sex of the offspring will differ now coming to the genetic factors so genetic factors in some animals like human the gender or of the individual is decided from a pair of chromosome which is the 23rd pair called the sex chromosome there are 23 pairs you have been learning out of these 23 pairs to 22 are autosomes okay they are responsible for they are, they are not there in the reproduction part so only one which is a sex a uh, chromosome that will be deciding for the uh, this one uh, gender of the child so there is a small description of sex determination this you have been learning from the lower grades children if i take a male and a female in human male and female a homozygous condition for the sex chromosome is there in females they have both x chromosome whereas the male have an x and a y chromosome 
OK, so when the gametes are formed, you all you know that gametes are haploid. OK, so gametes which can come from male side can be X or it can give a Y, whereas a female can only give an X chromosome. So now when uh, the cross takes over, there is a possibility of X combining with X in such a condition. It what will be expressed out is a female and if Y combines with X, so it's a male. OK, uh, that you know from very beginning, but what is more important uh, because you are writing a public exam over here, the government is very is emphasizing on the fact that. Hmm, the sex of the children will be determined by what they inherit from their father, not from their mother, because mother is having women are having XX, so they can give only an X chromosome, right? It, they can give only an X in the allele, but male can give either an X or a Y. So females cannot, it cannot be determined from female side. Okay, a child who inherits the X chromosome from her father will be a girl, and the one who inherits a Y chromosome from a father will be boy. Why government is emphasizing it? Government is emphasizing it because uh, you know that already in India, some uh, some parts of India, what uh, the female are being blamed for bearing a girl child. Okay, and female feticide is also there. So this is the part which is being emphasized. So it will come for justification. Be ready. Now coming back to our Mendel's law, there is no space, so I have put it over here. So what is the first Mendel law which we talked about? Not in chronological order. We are just discussing the laws. So the law of first, the one which we are discussing first is the law of independent assortment. What does it state? It state that a pair of trait Seg segregates independently of another during gamete formation. Just now we saw during gamete formation, the trait it the its gametes are haploid. So if it is X Y, X is coming and Y is coming independently. What is happening? It is independent assortment. This was also observed in Mendel's experiment as you can see over here. So what can be the gametes of this parent? It can be capital T or small t. Independently, the two alleles of the same gene can be expressed. OK, now the second law coming to the second law. Let's again go down children. As there was no space where I have kept it. Let me check. Oh, it's not. Uh, I think I have not written it over here, so let us discuss going back to the Mendel's law. Let us discuss from there. One is independent assortment. We have. So independent inheritance. What do we mean by in this independent inheritance? Very important in the dihybrid hybrid cross. He showed that both the traits okay if they are independently inherited it's not like that that if it is round shape it has to be green only if it is round shape it can be yellow also so what we are doing independently inherited the traits are independently inherited independent inheritance of two separate traits that is what are the traits the shape and the color from which uh, cross he he concluded this from the dihybrid hybrid cross. Now coming to the mono hybrid cross that we have already discussed. It is the uh, dominance law of dominance. What does it say? That the trait, the dominant trait can be expressed if only one uh, even in the heterozygous condition. OK, the dominant trait can be expressed, whereas the recessive trait can will be expressed only when it is a homozygous condition, right? So with this, we finish with your hereditary revision. This part is mostly deleted. This part is deleted for uh, from the portion of this year. So all the best children do good. Thank you.